Hello and welcome to the Concentra webinar, Using On-Site Medical Expertise to Recruit and Retain Skilled Employees. Today's webinar will be presented by Giovanni Galara and Mike Klein. Giovanni Galara is Concentra's Chief Clinical Services Officer, overseeing Concentra's therapy, specialty care, referral, ancillary services, medical review, and pharmacy programs. He has led Concentra's advancements in injury recovery and efficient workers' compensation case closure since joining the company in 2011. Mike Ryan is the Chief Operating Officer of Concentra's on-site health programs business unit, overseeing the operations of Concentra's more than 130 on-site clinics. He has extensive experience in healthcare and a strong knowledge of emerging workers' compensation and legislative issues affecting occupational health care. At the conclusion of the presentation, we will have a 10 to 15 minute Q&A session with Giovanni and Mike. You can submit your questions throughout the presentation to be answered during the Q&A. They will answer as many questions as possible within the time allowed. A recording of the webinar will be emailed to you after the presentation, so you can view it again at your convenience. Giovanni, Mike, we're ready to begin. Great, thank you. Um, good afternoon, folks. Uh, this is Giovanni Galara. First, I want to thank everybody for joining. I know it's a uh, Friday afternoon here in August, so appreciate you spending some time with us this afternoon, and hopefully you take away some good information from the presentation. Um, before we go into the agenda items, um, what we'll do is we'll really start with uh, two really high-level themes as far as what the uh, goal of the presentation is, and it'll be supported by the agenda items that you see in front of you. So at a high level, really what we're going to try and do is really paint the landscape from what the current employment landscape is and some of the drivers um, currently in the workforce right now that are uh, prohibiting folks from potentially returning to work. Uh, secondly, we're also going to uh, shed some light on the continued impacts of COVID and then uh, Again, on that one major theme, we're gonna talk about how the importance and the focus on worker health and safety really could be a huge opportunity for employers and uh, your customers potentially to really drive um, better workforce participation and support the business objectives uh, for employers and potentially your customers. The second big theme is really leveraging on-site care into driving better workforce health and supporting not only the health and wellness of workers, but also, again, meeting the needs of the business objectives in a way that's cost affordable and value added to the employees. So with the agenda specifically, um, we have the six agendas here. We'll talk through and cover the drivers of the skilled labor shortages. We'll address work health safety concerns of employees, specifically around COVID, and other occupational self safety concerns. Uh, we'll walk through how to create a safer workplace with an on-site program that is tailored to employer needs. Uh, number four, we'll incorporate components of successful on-site programs focusing on employer engagement and successful partnership with the medical provider. Number five, how to make an on-site medical support um, affordable. And then number six, we'll paint a compelling business case for the use of on-site care. And then we'll follow up with some question and answer. So next slide. So next, I will uh, set the stage and provide some background of the current employment landscape. So next slide here, as you can see, <clears throat> on the left side of the slide, um, this information is provided monthly by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, specifically the Job Openings and Labor Turnover Survey. And if you take a look at the top number, from March to May, <clears throat> job openings uh, were well over 9 million per month. In June of this year, the number of job openings uh, rose to over 10.1 million, which was a, a new record. So job openings is... Um, often a sign of a strong economy, which currently as we're recovering through COVID is a positive um, scenario for the US economy. The challenge is currently the um, volume of hiring is not meeting the demands of the job opening. And then on the right side of the slide, you can see uh, a US Chamber of Commerce report, specifically the America Works report, 
really shares across diverse industries, including construction, healthcare, and hospitality, 76% of those respondents were extremely concerned uh, with regards to the difficulty in recruiting uh, the current employee volume that's needed to run their respective businesses. So next slide. What we'll show here is really uh, a tale of um, two stories here. So um, if we can think back to May of 2020, we'll focus on um, the total private and government lines. The hiring levels in May of 2020 were 8.3 million versus the job openings in that light blue mark at 5.4 million. So fast forward to May of 2021, we see those ratios almost reversed, meaning uh, much fewer hiring levels with an overwhelming larger um, volume of job openings. And again, if you think about your respective industries, um, some of your colleagues in um, other industries, and if you read on the news, uh, there's definitely a shortage of employees across multiple industry types. And we're seeing it um, here very clearly in the uh, US Bureau of Labor Statistics report. Um, we'll also present June information, and that's the next slide here. And again, very similar. The ratios have gotten slightly better in June, but you can see uh, in reference to that 10.1 million uh, job opening number compared to that 6.7 uh, million hiring level. So again, uh, the race for skilled employees is definitely out there. And um, what we'll talk through next, the next slide here, is really potentially the impact of what happens when you have a shortage of skilled labor. And in this example here, we'll take construction as our example industry. So uh, this information comes from two sources, the construction executive, uh, which uh, this publication was in May of 2020, and also the U US Chamber of Commerce, Commerce Commercial Construction Index. So the key takeaways here, 80% of polled contractors were highly concerned with job site safety due to the lack of skilled employees. I think the second uh, bullet here is really important, and this comes out of the U.S. Chamber of Cong Con uh, Commerce, that nearly 35% of new untrained employees in construction are injured in their first year. So from a uh, workers' comp occupational health employer claims professional. Um, that is some pretty stunning um, statistics there when you think about uh, the potential impact to our patients, our customers, and employees. Um, so, and then the third component here, the big takeaway here is there is absolutely business impact to the lack of skilled employees in the, work, in the workforce. And specifically, uh, in addition to the heightened safety risk and potential claims costs, but there's also inefficiencies in business objectives and um, business management as well, without having the right folks in the right place um, currently in the workforce. So next slide. So next, um, what we're going to ta talk about here are really what are the um, what is the workforce telling us regarding some of the concerns uh, with a willingness to return into the workplace? Indeed.com uh, uh, did a survey of 5,000 unemployed adults uh, between the ages of 18 to 64. And what they found was one of the major drivers was really um, COVID and some of the vaccination rates being a key driver in their willingness to return to work. And again, that's been substantiated with some other uh, resources as well. So if you think about your own uh, personal industries, um, just getting an appreciation of uh, the percentage of uh, your colleagues or family members that are vaccinated. Um, there is a handful of folks in the workforce that are not comfortable with where we are from a vaccination standpoint, and that's potentially prohibiting their willingness to enter the job force. The next slide will give you some detailed information here. So, and again, these are continued results from the Indeed survey. <clears throat> the two biggest drivers for motivating folks or uh, allowing folks a level of comfort to return into the workforce 
are really um, driven by the five categories we see in front of you, but all, we're gonna focus on um, the increased vaccinations. So if you take a look at uh, college degree um, employees versus less than a college degree, you can see both are um, pretty vocal about increased vaccinations being a key driver for returning to the workplace. And then the second category being more job opportunities. So again, uh, thinking about our employers out there, um, the willingness to improve vaccination rates is going to be a, a key component of getting folks comfortable with returning into the workplace. The next slide here. There is a potential dilemma, however, if you take a look at, and we have uh, four different resources here, uh, there is a percentage of the workforce uh, that has been poll uh, that's reporting throughout these polls, uh, ranging from 14 to 25 percent of American adults say they're not willing to get vaccinated. So again, that could create some potential challenges uh, for those folks in the workforce that are waiting for higher levels of vaccination, where their um, peers or community members, uh, ranging from 14 to 25 percent, will say they will never get vaccinated, and that's for various reasons. So the next slide. So where does occupational health support come in here? So um, in this month's uh, construction executive, there was an article published specifically on utilizing on-site occupational health experts to foster dialogue to overcome vaccine hesit hesitancy and provide vaccine clinics to overcome healthcare access issues or concerns. So again, um, when you think about uh, a potential workforce, whether it's for your own employees or potentially a customer that you serve, um, partnering with the right occupational health provider to provide education and also access to vaccine uh, could be a huge windfall to A, increase the um, health and safety at the work site, but also to demonstrate a willingness to potential employees that um, the safety and concern of incoming um, employees is uh, paramount. On a side note, um, another consideration is also to understand, and this comes from the diversity, equity, and inclusion perspective, is to really understand um, the, the makeup of your workforce. The University of Penn study identified that minority groups have higher levels of vaccine hesitancy uh, than the general population. And what they found essentially was if community members of minority groups can partner with either employers or healthcare providers, there's a higher level of vaccine acceptance in community members when there is uh, embracing of um, diverse groups with healthcare providers. So that is an opportunity to truly understand whether you're an employer or working with an employer to really ask those questions to understand who makes up that worker population. And in addition to medical expertise, are there other alternatives and partnership to ensure that uh, we're reaching diverse groups across the continuum? So next slide. All right. So additional um, health, health and wellness concerns um, outside of COVID, there's, there's two major here. Um, one is for folks that have had COVID in the past, and uh, I'm sure most of you have heard the term long haulers, um, the ability to partner with an onsite um, partner to address some of these long haulers to ensure that their return to work is safe. And also there's a, a plan to address some of the deconditioning associated with the long haulers. Um, when you think about the volume of folks that have been out of the workforce, uh, and we can all probably relate to this, um, there's probably a certain part of our lives over the past, you know, 14 to 24 months uh, where our level of activity might not have been what it usually is or accustomed to be uh, based on some of the lockdowns and so on and so forth. So if you're out of the workforce and you do want to come back to a physical job, but you haven't uh, basically functioned at that level of activity, there's a role that the on-site medical um, provider can provide as far as creating conditioning programs and ensuring a safe return to work. So the next slide. And before I hand it off to Mike, really 
um, the goal here was to provide, provide a little bit of background and um, really what Mike is going to present here is how the on-site medical clinics can really uh, address some of the concerns. How can they be a solution for some of the hesitancy and the willingness to return to the work site and then potentially uh, what that looks like from a specificity standpoint. So um, how do you tailor an on-site to really meet the goals of uh, an employer from a business objectives, but also the specific employee base that they're looking to recruit and retain. So Mike, I'll hand it off to you. Thanks, Giovanni. I appreciate the handoff and the great context you provided. So an on-site program can be a very powerful catalyst, um, and that's because they're embedded in your business and should be embedded in your culture as well. It demonstrates that the employee health is a top priority of the business, Employees and job seekers who know their health and safety will be supported in this way are likely to regard your company more positively than others at the time, at this time due to virus fear. But, you know, we're also seeing with virus fear, it's not just virus fear. Folks are, uh, COVID-19 has spurred folks to put their health and safety in much higher regard. And, and that's a trend we expect to see continue. Uh, next slide. So the on-site clinics can be designed to provide an entire spectrum of healthcare services, from one provider to a full-blown medical centers with on-site diagnostics, such as x-ray and ultrasound services. The two major areas are occupational medicine and primary care. Both of these models also usually provide some sort of urgent care services as well, the typical walk-in um, for your general aches and pains not feeling well, not necessarily related to a primary care chronic condition or an occupational related injury or physical need. Our focus tends to lean towards occupational medicine and the three lines of service that are most popular tend to be the pre-employment screening. Uh, this includes physicals and functional testing uh, to assess that the job candidate can perform the essential functions of the job without safety risk uh, to self or others overseeing safety and injury prevention, um, such as workplace health promotion. It also includes clinicians providing evidence-based guidance to protect workforce safety, as well as vaccinations, possible vaccine boosters, uh, and symptom identification, uh, symptom identification and management. Providing injury care, this includes on-site clinicians, medical care, and physical therapy, depending on physical staffing. Injury prevention, again, is a key component to this service as well. Our ultimate goal would be to prevent the injuries from happening in the first place. If additional services are needed, we have our national footprint of 550-plus locations um, that we can leverage, uh, and we have an integrated technology and EMR system with them. So that allows the, the uh, doctors that are not on-site and embedded uh, in the organization to have a true picture of what the employee was going through if they would need to go to our center for one reason or another. And that's usually depending on on the size of the on-site, and we'll address that a little later in, in the presentation. We'll go to the next slide. So we have more than 130 consent or on-sites nationwide. Uh, we've supported the employer and employee needs during the pandemic in a number of ways. Some of those examples include our clinicians were providing employers informed evidence-based information and guidance on protocols, vaccinations, and safety. We managed cases, calmed fears, and provided guidance to employees when they were exposed to COVID-19 or, or suspected exposure. Our clinicians put employees at ease through their presence in the workplace and easy access to them through our concentric telemed. So early on, uh, you know, in the pandemic, we were able to pivot um, to keep symptomatic employees out of the workplace, but still provide them the treatment and guided guidance they needed by the clinicians they knew through our telemedicine options, uh, which proved very valuable. Um, and our clinicians took steps to preserve employee health and function, both COVID and non-COVID related. You know, we have anecdotal, anecdotal evidence and case studies showing how our on-site clinicians diagnosed various primary care uh, needs. We also, you know, were able to catch some folks uh, with cancer diagnosis and save some of them and, and keep them going in vital functions at work. So um, overall, you know, it provides a unique opportunity to address employee needs across a wide spectrum of services. 
Next slide. So on-site programs aren't plug and play or just out of the box. Like if you have X employees, this is exactly what you want to do. Or if you have this industry, this is what you should be doing. So they do require collaboration between the employer and the on-site provider. And there's really, if you look at the next slide here, there's four vital components to on-site success. A structural approach. An on-site program needs to be embedded in the business. We'll talk about this a little bit later. Buy-in. An on-site must have the buy-in and ongoing support of the company's senior and site leadership to be successful. Collaboration. Company leadership and on-site team must work together to establish and meet on-site program objectives. And finally, success is more obtainable when you choose an on-site provider that aligns with your company and standards and culture. And we'll talk a little bit about how we do that. All right, next slide, please. Okay, so an on-site program is embedded in the business. This may be the most key point to helping ease virus fear, virus fear and instill confidence that the employee health and safety will be protected. An on-site program sends a message that the employee health and safety are valued more importantly, the on-site medical team builds a relationship and trust with the employees. It's, it's not just okay to put an on-site into an office or into a location. That on-site team needs to build the relationship with the patients and have the support of both the site and the corporate leadership. You know, in a way, we're able to create a medical home that provides sort of a point of access for all of the care needs. In an occupational medicine model, there may be needs for specialty care and stuff outside um, of the four walls of the center inside your on-site, and we're able to sort of steer that, guide that, help the patient navigate through that process um, in most states. There are a few states that make that a little difficult with the comp law. But during the compensation cases, an on-site clinician keeps the injured employee and employer connected and provides a sense of being one team and getting them back to function. When we are on site and embedded, the employee knows we understand what they're doing every day at their job because the on site clinicians spend time on the floor. They do a post injury assessment, whether it be an, an RN or an athletic trainer or, or all the way up to our medical clinicians, both be on site. And so there's a trust there versus an outside provider that they've actually seen what the employee is doing. Um, and that's, that's important in that return to work progress and really helps that for us. It helps length decrease that time from injury to return to normal work. And the next slide. So executive leadership is eager for consistent ongoing medical guidance. We've seen, uh, we've seen with the rise of the Delta variant and potentially other variants, real-time accurate health information and guidance are highly valued and very likely will be for some time to come. <clears throat> Leadership and on-site clinicians must be well integrated to make sure they are aligned on not just COVID-related goals, but the key performance indicators that drive success of their program outside of COVID. Safety, injury prevention, wellness, timely treatment, and exceptional patient care. Many companies are now ordering on, or now considering on-site programs to address their pandemic-related employee health care needs but the benefits go way beyond just COVID. Next slide. So why is collaboration with leadership so important? Working together and communicating effectively promotes the employee engagement and utilization of the on-site clinic to be successful. Both teams have to work together to drive the utilization of the on-site center. Building value through buy-in, participation, alignment, and support of all parties can help meet goals, show concern for employees, and help calm not only virus fears, but general health and workplace medical needs. <clears throat> Next slide. Finally, an on-site should align well with the company's standards and culture. At Consensura, we do this in several ways. From a clearly outlined and collaborated scope of work prior to launching an, an on-site, we also provide cultural fit interviews for all of our on-site colleagues, uh, and then we follow that up after implementation with quarterly stewardship reviews and as needed meetings to go ahead and make sure we are truly meeting the objectives. Obviously, this happens more frequently in times of crisis like we've experienced uh, in the last year and a half. Through this process, we get a deep understanding of the, biz of the business 
and allows the on-site to shift services and staffing as applicable. We can build relationships with the workforce, the leaders, and ultimately achieve the exceptional medical outcomes that the clients and patients are looking for. Next slide. So I just want to, I said a lot about um, on-site and site, so we want to take a step back and just talk about, you know, an on-site does not have to be a heavily staffed full functioning clinic with diagnostics, as I mentioned earlier. At Concentra, an on-site can be configured to serve your business needs and budget. There are many options in size, services, and staffing, ranging from a single on-site nurse, APC, or even just a medical director, to that full service clinic I mentioned. One very popular option is the athletic trainer-led on-site program. If you have athletic trainer filling multiple roles, such as promoting musculoskeletal health through exercise programs, injury prevention and ergonomics, providing injury treatment when appropriate, using the knowledge of first aid to help avoid an OSHA recordable. Now, we're going to go through a couple slides that will just show you some options based on scale. So the first option would be for smaller businesses with 500 to 1,000 employees. Staffing can involve a registered nurse, athletic trainer, based on needs and services. The list of possible services you see here is long, but as I mentioned before, the athletic trainer can do a triage. Of, both athletic and nurses can triage work injuries. Um, athletic trainer is a little more geared towards the injury prevention and the ergonomic assessments that could be highly needed in the um, in, uh, manufacturing industry or injury prevention on job sites, construction sites, such of that nature. The registered nurse uh, tends to lean more towards the first, first aid treatment, doing some of the occupational clinical testing, uh, and the case management. And these clinics tend to have a smaller footprint, as you see in the floor plan, uh, floor plan description, and a lot of times can be run with one exam room or, or a sort of treatment area and a bathroom. The next slide, We'll go up a little more in size and talk about 1,000 to 2,000 employees. Now, staffing, you start to look at adding a nurse practitioner, uh, possibly a medical assistant, depending on volume, which will allow the clinicians to do more clinical stuff. Still consider registered nurse, athletic trainers, and possibly uh, a health coach, depending on the scope and what is needed. And you start to add to your scope of services, urgent care and work injury treatment with the addition of the nurse practitioner, as well as limited primary care. The wellness services um, can be done by the nurse in, in both situations. But so you start in this model, you start to really go into a full occupational health sort of model. Um, and the nurse practitioner could work with either an athletic trainer or a physical therapist, depending on, again, scope and, and what exactly is happening to provide a full scope of work care injury treatment. Now, more of a medium floor plan, uh, typically need a waiting room in this model or a waiting area uh, and some sort of admitting area. And then usually around two to three exam rooms and a lab collection room area as well. Now, companies with larger workforces on the next slide usually find their best value in a full clinic. And the reason why is we can provide more services and there's more opportunity to pull levers to provide that return on investment um, from a financial perspective as well as, as well as integrate more deeply with the culture. So this is where you'd consider adding a physician and the physical therapist um, and the, the other um, staffing options would be dependent on scope and size. Again, pretty, you're looking at adding physical therapy um, and continue with all of the other items we had before. Uh, and then chronic condition management falls you know, under the primary care umbrella as well. These offices are usually larger, uh, 2,000 square feet or more. Uh, again, a waiting room, front desk, three to four exam room. And when you start to have a, an employer of this side, you start to look at the hours. Um, and you may have a clinician there for a set block of hours, but then you'll have like a nurse and the athletic trainer may cover additional hours to give you more than an a 8 to 5 or 9 to 5 sort of coverage. And we start looking at the evenings and weekends. And we do that in the smaller models as well. Uh, but depending on when the populations are coming through and how do we touch the most employees, um, I think that's, that's really, again, goes to that scope of work meeting we have at the beginning and working with senior leadership as well as site leadership to really set the goal for the uh, on-site itself. You go to the next slide. <clears throat> So, 
as Giovanni, as, as Giovanni mentioned, job seekers and the skilled labor you need are wary of returning to workplace as COVID-19 and Delta variants rise. All indications are that this will also go beyond COVID-19 and the expectation of job seekers has shifted to a, a more of a health focus. Occupational health experts are uniquely equipped to support you with evidence-based medical knowledge to overcome virus fear, build confidence, and that the, and demonstrate that the employer is committed to the employee health and safety. We're also there to help with vaccination, um, as well as the uh, testing options for the for the vaccine hesitant, where that is an option. So with more than 30 years of experience providing on-site care and our 40 years of occupational health experience. Concentra knows what it takes to achieve an on-site program success and how to work with you to make it happen. We offer multiple programs and configurations to meet your needs, and our on-site programs have demonstrated throughout the pandemic how our clinicians were able to ease employee fears, raise their confidence about being at work, and enable them to be focused on work and be productive. So if any of you are interested, obviously don't wait. You can reach out to either Giovanni or I today, and we're happy to take some of your questions and answers uh, about the webinar. And we do appreciate your time on Friday afternoon, and we hope this was uh, helpful.